Hello, Marco Valgimigli from Cardo Centro Ticino, Switzerland, and I am just off the podium after having presented the master DAPT study results here at ESC Digital Experience 2021. Let me walk you quickly through what we did and why we did and what we found. Where we got the patient from 140 sites across 30 European countries, as well as Asian country, as well as country from South America and Australia. The study was actually set up to determine whether an abbreviated DAPT regimen consisting of 30 days would preserve net and major adverse clinical events, and if so, mitigates bleeding risk in patients who were purposely selected for being at high bleeding risk who underwent PCI. Patients were actually screened mainly at the time of the index procedure. They had to be treated with ultimaster stent implantation, but then uh, we posed no limit with respect to the number of lesions that were supposed to be treated, the location, the complexity, nor based on the clinical presentation. Patient had to be stable, meaning without any recurrent ischemic events, for the first 30 days, and uh, in whom in this patient no further revascularization was planned because of course that would require additional DPT prolongation, but if these two conditions were met, patients were randomly located to immediately stop the DAPT and continue with a single antiplatelet therapy for 11 months or five months if there was a concomitant indication to oral anticoagulation, or in the control group to continue DPT for at least two or five months in patient with or without concomitant oral anticoagulation. Then patient followed a, also in the control group with a single antiplatelet therapy up to 11 months. For the study, single antiplatelet therapy meant either aspirin or a P2Y12 inhibitor monotherapy. We pre-specified uh, three primary outcomes to be tested in a hierarchical manner. First, the net adverse clinical events, which was a composite of death, MI, stroke, and major bleeding. Second, a MACE endpoint, which was the composite of death, MI, stroke. And third, a major or non-major bleeding uh, complica uh, co composite endpoint, which was the composite of BARC 2, uh, 3, or 5. Again, to be tested as a last one. We actually could not proceed to test the third point if known inferiority was not met for the first two in the per protocol population, whereas the last endpoint was to be tested in the intention to treat population, so all patients who have actually been included into the study. Uh, the mean population, the, the average profile of the population was really high risk. The average age was 76. We had the majority of patients uh, male, as always, when we run CAD studies, 69% were in fact male, 33% of patients with diabetes. And the profile of the history of the patient was quite remarkable. 20% of patients with prior MI, pretty much as many with prior uh, PCI. 11% of patients with prior stroke. Uh, the presentation was also important. We have a fairly distribution with 50% of patients having chronic and the outstanding 50% of patients with acute coronary syndrome, including ST segment elevation MI, and a fairly high number of patients with advanced kidney class. From a procedural standpoint, the vast majority of procedures were undertaken through the radial approach. A quarter of patients underwent multivessel intervention, also including more than five percent of patients who underwent left main stenting. The vast majority of patients, again, underwent treatment for at least one complex procedure, according to AHA-ACC classification. More than 20% of patients had overlapping stent, and bifurcation or trifurcation stenting was accomplished in 4% of the patient. We began by testing the first primary point, NACE, a NACE event occurred in 7.5% uh, of patients with abbreviated versus 7.7% .7 of patients with the standard DAPT. That led to a difference in cumulative incidence of minus 0.23, an upper limit of the confidence interval, which was 1.33, which largely fulfilled the non-inferiority endpoint. 
uh, identical results were observed uh, when, for sensitivity, we repeated the same analysis in the full intention to treat population. We then proceeded to test the MACE, so the pure ischemic endpoint of that mind stroke, and also for that endpoint, non-inferiority was met. Event rate were actually 6.1 with abbreviated versus 5.9 with standard EPT, difference in cumulative incidence of uh, 0.11, upper limit 1.56, again, largely fulfilling non-inferiority. So we finally proceeded with the third primary endpoint, the bleeding endpoint, and as expected, we had a very large difference in bleeding favoring the abbreviated EPT, with the number needed to treat as low as 35. For the secondary endpoint, actually none of them differed at the clinical, at the statistical significant level, apart from two. Uh, the first one was the rate of CDA. Actually, CDA was lower with abbreviated DAPT owing to lower rates of both ischemic and hemorrhagic cerebral events. BARC2 was lower with abbreviated DAPT. BARC3 did not differ when it was separately appraised, and we saw uh, two fatal bleeding events with abbreviated versus eight fatal bleeding events with standard DAPT. So in conclusion, the study really supports the notion that by reducing DAPT down to one month after ultimaster stent implantation, that was a prerequisite to get into the study, that regimen was actually safe and in fact safer than standard EPT duration, which was in our study on average of 193 days. I think the results have massive implication for practice. If anything, I don't wanna say that you should never go beyond one month, but if and when you go beyond one month, I think that needs to be clinically justified.